Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Big Talk with Bruce Dickey this Wednesday morning. My name is Bruce Dickey. Thank you so much for tuning in here. You are watching us on Wabash Catch TV. My guest today is Kevin Green. He's the Salem High School football coach, and we'll talk to Kevin in just a minute as uh, the uh, as football season getting ready to go. It's uh, Practices are underway. The two-a-days and all kinds of things have started on Monday, and we'll get to Kevin talk about what is going on with the Salem High School program. We'll have three of the Salem football games on television on Wabash Catch TV over the course of this uh, nine game season, hopefully 10, 11, 12 game season, and uh, hopefully be, get you some playoff games too. That'd be fun, wouldn't it? Absolutely. Absolutely, he says. What's going on around the area here on this Wednesday, August 8th? Well, not a whole heck of a lot. Down at, Hol uh, down at Heritage Woods here in Florida, they've got a watermelon social. That's a good time. That uh, starts at 2 o'clock today, and uh, it'll be uh, there from 2 o'clock to 3 o'clock, bringing in all kinds of watermelons, going to carve them up. It's a perfect August thing. So, uh, so if you have some friends down there at Heritage Woods, by all means, stop in, say hello in there, and uh, say hi to uh, the folks at uh, Heritage Woods. Also, the Flora Church of the Nazarene is continuing continuing their vacation Bible school tonight. That's at 6 p.m. And that is, uh, like I said, at the Florida Church of the Nazarene. If you want more information or if you need a ride to it, it's 662-2337. Uh, 662-2337 if you like more information. I think that's running all week long. Started on Sunday. I believe uh, it's going till tonight. It might be the last night. 6 p.m. Also, folks have been uh, the the Marion County Fair now over the uh, Clay County Fair is over Edwards County Fair is over Wayne County Fair is over the uh, Richland County Fair is over where to go if you want a fair we can go down to White County, down to Carmi. Carmi's got their fair going on. And uh, tonight their activity in the uh, big hall is bingo. Bingo at uh, the uh, White County Fair in Carmi. What's on cable tonight? What's on Wabash? Well, all kinds of baseball. If you're, again, uh, this is uh, the dog days of August. Preseason football games the uh, start in earnest tomorrow night on Thursday, but uh, still all kinds of baseball going on right now. I've got five games to choose from if you're looking for baseball on Wabash tonight. Uh, actually starts this afternoon at 2:40. It's Philadelphia at Arizona. Vince Velasquez on the mound for the uh, Phillies versus Patrick Corbin for the Arizona Diamondbacks. That game again at 2:40 today. That'll be on MLB Network Channel 599. Also, Atlanta is at Wabash. Wabash. Atlanta is at Washington tonight. That's at 6:05. Mike Fultonavich versus Gio Gonzalez. That'll be on ESPN. Take a look at that. Also, uh, St. Louis, the Cardinals back on the road. They're down in Miami tonight. That starts at 6:10 p.m. Finishing up their three-game series. John Gant on the mound for the Cardinals. He'll go against Trevor Richards for the uh, Miami Marlins. And that is on Fox Sports Midwest Channel 630. Of course, these are the, the channels on fiber. If you're if you're over in Salem, they're going to be on a little different channel. So uh, look around. You'll be able to find them. Also, the Yankees at the White Sox tonight. That's at 710. Luis Severino on the mound for the Yankees. He'll be taking on Lucas Giolito. For the White Sox, that's on uh, NBC Sports Channel 643. And also, uh, late night tonight, MLB Channel 599. The L.A. Dodgers are at Oakland. They're in uh, in Oakland, Oakland Coliseum. The Big O at 9.05 to take on the A's. Clayton Kershaw taking the mound for the Dodgers against Brett Anderson. That again on 599, Major League Baseball Network. I'm assuming you're a... Cub fan. We are, yes. We Die are. Hard. Yeah, my family and You're I. You're claiming yeah. the family right, too. Right, you have, right. you've, you've brainwashed your we children. Have. We have, sufficiently. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, that's cool. That's all you can have. All you want is 
harmony right. in the household, that's right. Kevin. That's right. That's exactly right. That is Kevin Green. He's the Salem High School football coach. My name is Bruce Dickey. You are watching a Big Talk with Bruce Dickey right here on Wabash Catch TV, Channel 3 over in Salem. We appreciate you folks watching. Channel 100 or Channel 25 here in Flora. Also Channel 100 all over the place on Fiber. Kevin and I will be back. We're going to talk Salem football and all kinds of other things when we return again. Big Talk with Bruce Dickey. Back after these. Come see us at Anthony's Wild West in downtown Flora. Enjoy salad, pizza, and pasta buffet 11 to 2, Monday through Saturday. Not hungry for pizza? Our menu features a variety of food for every taste. Our dining room is large and spacious for two or a crowd. Let us help you host a private party in one of our banquet rooms. Visit the fallout shelter to have a drink with good friends. Then try your luck at one of our five gaming machines. See you soon in the Wild West. Welcome to Clay County Hospital. Clay County Hospital and Clinics offer the best in services and care in the area with a staff that strives to provide the very best in patient-centered care. We offer full hospital services including radiology, therapy, surgery, labs, and emergency services. Our clinics located in Flora, Louisville, and Clay City allow us to reach out to Clay County residents so that you never have to go far from home for your health care needs. In addition to our regular provider staff, we also offer affiliated specialty provider services at our Flora Clinic. Finally, have a minor injury or illness but don't want to wait for an appointment? Our walk-in, no appointment clinic hours in Flora are Monday through Thursday, 11 a.m. until 8 p.m. and Saturday from 8 a.m. until noon. Make Clay County Hospital your number one choice for health care, convenient and close to home. Clay County Hospital, your number one choice in health care. Get what you want and nothing else when you order a la carte internet from Wabash Communications. Wabash Communications is now able to offer a la carte internet called broadband only with fast download and upload speeds, reliable service, and unlimited data usage. No phone service is required for our broadband only plans. Our broadband only menu includes packages up to one gig download. Call us at 665-3311 now to order. Service availability and internet speed will depend on location. Contact us for details. When you want an honest deal in hometown service without the runaround, go to Lamont Chevrolet Chrysler in Fairfield. Let Gabe McGahey, Sheldon Bunning, Jeff Black, Dennis Downs, Matthew Rogers, or Caleb Dunn score the best deal for you on your next new or pre-owned vehicle. Parts and service departments with factory trained technicians and express lane and state-of-the-art tire and alignment technology. Lamont's always inspects your battery, antifreeze, wipers, and tires for free. We want you prepared for the open road ahead. Open 24-7 at LeMondsOnline.com. You'll like the way we do business. Hi, my name is Bruce Dickey of Wabash Catch TV's Big Talk with Bruce Dickey. Watch us each weekday right here on your local cable station. We're on at 9 a.m. with a repeat at 9 p.m. It's your local TV talk show with plenty of information, fun, and frivolity to get your start day started right or maybe even ended right. Please contact me at 665-9970 or at BruceD at Wabash.net if you are a a member of your organization would like to be a guest on the show at 665-9970. Big talk with Bruce Dickey. Hey, thanks for watching. Your call is very important to us. Please hold. Your call will be answered in the order it was received. Tired of paying a big faceless company for your local telephone service in Flora? Now you can easily switch your 662 telephone number to Wabash Communications in Flora. That's right, Wabash can now provide local phone service to the Flora area, and yes, you can keep your 662 telephone number. It's available to both business and residential customers. Call us today at 662-3636. Wabash, your local telecommunications provider.
Welcome back. Big Talk with Bruce Dickey. My name is Bruce Dickey. Thank you so much for tuning in. My guest today, it's Kevin Green. He is the head coach of Salem High School, uh, head football coach, and uh, we're going to talk about all kinds of different things. But uh, first of all, Kevin, you've been at Salem for many, many years. I've been at Fairfield for most of my life, and now we are having our per first professional meeting. How in the world could two football guys, I've been doing football for 25 years, broadcasting it. How could we only just meet today? Yeah, I, I don't know. I'm not sure about that. It's such a shame. It is. It is. And it's funny you bring up Fairfield because um, when I was right out of college back in 1997, back in the 1900s, <laughs> yeah. um, superintendent at Fairfield, I had applied for a job there and I had accepted a position at my alma mater, Hersher, already. Mm -hmm. He had called me in mid-July and, and uh, wanted me to come down there for an interview and was really uh, adamant about me coming down and checking out the community Don and everything. It, it probably was. Yeah. That name rings a bell. Yeah. And, um, and, and I thought about it, to be very truthful with you, but uh, I decided not to. And uh, But we've driven through Fairfield several times. I love that community. Yeah. Anytime we have to go there for sports or junior tackle games, uh, really enjoy driving through that community and spending time there. But uh, well, see, that would have been while the old NEC was still it was. together. Yes, very back much in so. Those days. Very much so, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell me a little bit about yourself. Sure. Everybody in Salem probably knows wife and kids and all that kind <laughs> sure, of thing. Sure, But uh, especially since one of them's a star, star football player. Right, yeah. Well, we um, this will be our eighth season in, in Salem. Uh, we were at Piatone High School for 12 years, uh, which is right up uh, I-57, just north of the Kankie bradley Bourbon area. Uh, both my wife and I graduated from Hersher High School. Okay. Um, which so is High not, school sweetheart? We were, yeah, That's senior nice. year. Yeah, yeah. I was able that? to, yeah, she, she dodged me for a while, but then I was able to snag her. <laughs> My, my senior year, uh, we had our lockers were right next to each other, so she didn't have any choice. Oh, so, yeah. she can, so she can blame like, right. the superintendent or the somebody, principal. Yeah, it's somebody else's the lockers, fault. Right, exactly. Yeah. Um, so anyway, but uh, but no, we were at Piatone for 12 years and um, had a really good run there. Superintendent by the name of Dr. Bob Dunn was the gentleman who hired me at Piatone, and he had been at Salem as the superintendent. Uh, spoke very highly of the community, and, and my wife and I had always wanted to move to Southern Illinois, and uh, when Coach Stewart, who was the previous coach uh, at Salem for 20 years, decided to retire uh, looked like an opportunity that yeah. we wanted to, to explore so yeah. here, here we are this will be our eighth season here and um, we have three boys Trevor is going to be a junior uh, as I said he was uh, an all-conference linebacker for us last year as a sophomore and then we have Samuel who's uh, a seventh grader going to be a seventh grader and Andrew who will be a fourth grader do now I, I presume Trevor participated in junior football mm -hmm. all the way through are the other boys participating in junior football as well we have uh, Samuel is a seventh grader on our seventh and eighth grade team and uh, Andrew Green is going to be a fourth grader, and Andrew hasn't really decided exactly what he wants to do yet, which is okay. Yeah, that's the right, thing. That's right. the thing. I always wonder about uh, football coaches or parents in general, wondering if you, you want to make sure you don't force a kid into something, right. or whether they want it or not. I think sometimes people on the outside – see football coaches and families of football coaches and they immediately think that uh, He's pushed their, their kids are going to be geared towards that and, and I'll be very truthful um, you know Trevor was probably our only one that was from the onset all football like really? he wanted to start in Piatone they started kids in first and second grade believe it or not wow. and uh, Wow was right and wow he was, he was yeah he was that our first early. he was our first so we didn't know any better yeah. um, but yeah, you know a little bit better now exactly we do and uh, and Samuel he played soccer for several years and, and to be truthful with you if he can came to us tomorrow and said, you know, I want to go back to soccer. Um, that would be fine. And Andrew, you know, he, he tried football last year. I think he made it two days and, and decided he, he didn't want to do it. Uh, he's played some soccer, played a little bit of basketball. Um, you know, track and cross country are probably going to be his things. And I, I, we just want our kids to do something. Yeah. You know, as a teacher and a coach, you see so many kids that go through high school and they just don't get involved in anything. Really? And, you know, whether it be the plays or the music department or sports, whatever it is, um, you know, we just want to see our kids get involved and be a part of the school community other than just going to school there you know that's, so well you know that's the thing you, you're you're coaching football but mm -hmm. you're also teaching there as well mm -hmm, absolutely and i think the more kids you have involved in extracurriculars the more vested they are in in seeing the school be successful in a positive uh, culture you know start to come through let's talk about your teaching tell mm -hmm. me about uh, what are you social studies you said teach social studies uh, i teach u.s history so i have three hours of u.s history in the morning and then i teach what, three, what grade level junior level history okay and then i have three sections of athletic weight training in the afternoon and um, i'm 
kind of the I kind of run the athletic weight training program for the other teachers. It's kind of our, our umbrella, if you coaches. will. Yes, yeah, so it's kind of an, an umbrella program that we run, and um, and that's been really successful. They started that program when I came down here uh, seven years ago, and uh, you know we have a waiting list of kids that want to get into that class really? now, and that's really awesome to see. Yeah, well, we have even even non athletes. Uh, we have to uh, try and find a way to get those kids in there, which is really a positive thing. That is outstanding. Mm-hmm. Talking here uh, with Kevin Green, head coach of Salem football. Uh, you were told you were a history coach, social studies and history. What's your favorite thing to teach in history? Probably, uh, we spend a lot of time on the Civil War and World War II, but I think I enjoy talking the most about Vietnam. The really? Vietnam War, yeah. Why so? I think it's probably a couple things. Number one, we have kids in our building still that have family members who participated in that war. Yeah. A high percentage of them, anyway. Yeah. And grandparents um, probably. About it, it is. Yeah, yeah. When I was in school, it was aunts and uncles yeah. and even parents at times. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we we you know the kids can identify. Uh, we have kids that can bring things in that their their family members brought back from that war and personal experiences. Um, you know, we've we've gotten to that realm of history where there's a lot of uh, actual footage that we can show kids in videos and things like that to show them what it was really like, and. You know, I don't. I don't think I would be being completely truthful. I didn't say. I know when we get to Vietnam, the end of the school year is is on the horizon, right? We're getting close to that. So, yeah. um, and I think most teachers, you know, when you get to that point of your curriculum, whatever subject yeah. you teach, uh, you can kind of see that that end of the school year on the horizon. So, you, you know, that that gives you a little bit more zip in your step too. What got you into teaching? My was parents co- was coaching getting you into teaching, or teaching gets you into coaching, or did they work together? I would say it was. I would say it was fifty fifty. Really? Uh, both my parents are teachers. Uh, my dad was a social studies teacher and a football coach, basketball coach for a long time. Uh, he was also a middle school principal for the last ten years of his career. My mom was a junior high language arts teacher, and um, you know, there's so many kids nowadays that, that aren't real sure what they want to do. And and I was not one of those kids. I knew really? I knew right away when I was nine or ten years old, working the sidelines for my dad's teams, running the water bottles out to the players. I knew exactly what I wanted to do with my life. Wow, that's you know, a, I knew I wanted to teach and I wanted luxury. to coach. It, it was it was. Yeah. Um, I bounced around subject areas a little bit when I was in college. I started out special ed, um, but because of some of the things I was doing uh, athletically in college, I didn't have time to do some of the uh, hands-on training hours that you needed to have to get your certification there. So I did change to social studies about I think it was my sophomore year but um, yeah I've always kind of known what path I wanted to take from from a where, very early age. Where did age. you go to school? Elmhurst College, Western Suburbs of Chicago. Uh, did you play football? or did I you? did. I played football. Who's and, your coach uh, up there? Uh, well, I had two of them. Uh, first one was Charlie Gale, and then Paul Crone was my second coach. And, Elmhurst um, always pretty solid. That's in AIA, right? No, they are Division Three. Division They're three. in the same okay. conference as Millican, oh, okay. uh, a little bit closer down yeah. this way. Yeah. But um, uh, and the we were boys. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Uh, we were not very good. Uh, yeah. We won, I think, four games in my four years there. Well, I see that made the a more big part fun. of that was that made them more fun to celebrate the ones. Right, exactly, exactly. <laughs> I, I tell people all the time. I, I I tell them I played football and I was a quarterback in college. And sometimes you get some looks like, oh, that's really awesome. And then I saw them, we won four games my entire career. A majority of that was because of poor quarterback play. Um, <laughs> but regardless, um, and I, I I pitched on the baseball team as well. Oh, and uh, and I was I was. Hey, that's a full time job. It was, man. yeah, it was. But I, I had a lot of fun. I enjoyed it, and uh, I, I'd do it again in a second if I could. And so you wanted to coach as well as teach the whole mm-hmm. time. Yeah, absolutely. I, so. So when you go into the college, when you're when you're uh, interviewing for the uh, for for well, when you're being recruited, you're basically interviewing them mm-hmm. as well as them interviewing you. Do you tell the coaches at so at what point during the process do you say to the coach, "Hey, look, I'd like some little help, a little bit of help, maybe a little mentoring." That must be go into how, how do you choose college too? It, it does. Um, I think that's really almost more than when you get there. You really? know, you kind of they kind of get to know you and what path you're on, and um, you know, I can say the coaches I had at Elmhurst in football and baseball were very gracious as far as helping uh, find us placement. There were several of my friends that, that played sports that were looking to go into that teaching coaching realm. And, uh, you know, our coaches had lots of contacts in the suburbs and different things and gave us opportunities to uh, be mentored by other people outside yeah. of our campus as well, which was um, which was really an awesome thing. And, and there were obviously in the western suburbs, there were tons of resources up there to, yeah. to, to tap into. 
Well, that's pretty good. Talking here again with uh, Kevin Green. He's a Salem High School football coach. We're going to get a little bit more into the nuts and bolts of Salem High School football, the summer program, the training, and what to expect uh, this season as we go on today. You are watching Big Talk with Bruce Dickey right here on Wabash Catch TV over in Salem on Channel 3 here in Flora on Channel 25 or 100. Also in Louisville, Jeff, Sisney, Fairfield, Browns, all over the place. You're, you're worldwide. Hey, love it. Love <laughs> You're it. worldwide. We'll be back right after these words. It's my, my choice. It's my choice. It's my choice. So many of our county residents have treatment or surgeries done at larger hospitals. What they don't always realize is that they have a choice. A choice to select where they can have physical therapy or any number of post-operative treatments and follow-ups. Clay County Hospital is your choice. Talk with your specialist, surgeon, or primary care provider and let them know that you want to stay close. Close to family, friends, and most importantly, home. Clay County Hospital, your number one choice in healthcare. When you want an honest deal in hometown service without the runaround, go to Lamont Chevrolet Chrysler in Fairfield. Let Gabe McGahey, Sheldon Bunning, Jeff Black, Dennis Downs, Matthew Rogers, or Caleb Dunn score the best deal for you on your next new or pre-owned vehicle. Parts and service departments with factory trained technicians and express lane and state-of-the-art tire and alignment technology. Lamont's always inspects your battery, antifreeze, wipers, and tires for free. We want you prepared for the open road ahead. Open 24-7 at LeMondsOnline.com. You'll like the way we do business. Get what you want and nothing else when you order a la carte internet from Wabash Communications. Wabash Communications is now able to offer a la carte internet called broadband only with fast download and upload speeds, reliable service, and unlimited data usage. No phone service is required for our broadband only plans. Our broadband only menu includes packages up to one gig download. Call us at 665-3311 now to order. Service availability and internet speed will depend on location. Contact us for details. Come see us at Anthony's Wild West in downtown Flora. Enjoy salad, pizza, and pasta buffet 11 to 2, Monday through Saturday. Not hungry for pizza? Our menu features a variety of food for every taste. Our dining room is large and spacious for two or a crowd. Let us help you host a private party in one of our banquet rooms. Visit the fallout shelter to have a drink with good friends. Then try your luck at one of our five gaming machines. See you soon in the Wild West. Hi, my name is Bruce Dickey of Wabash Catch TV's Big Talk with Bruce Dickey. Watch us each weekday right here on your local cable station. We're on at 9 a.m. with a repeat at 9 p.m. It's your local TV talk show with plenty of information, fun, and frivolity to get your start day started right or maybe even ended right. Please contact me at 665-9970 or at D at wabash.net if you are a member member of your organization would like to be a guest on the show at 665-9970. Big talk with Bruce Dickey. Hey, thanks for watching. At Wabash Communications, our goal is simple, to keep people connected. And today we are doing just that, better than ever, by delivering the latest technology and personal service only a local provider can offer. We offer services anywhere from fast, reliable internet, TV services, and home monitoring solutions to crystal clear local and long distance phone service. Wabash continues the commitment we started back in 1952, delivering a great connection to the most important people we know, our customers. So choose Wabash, the local service from people you can trust. Yep. Welcome back to Big Talk with Bruce Dickey. I'm Bruce Dickey. This is Kevin Green. He's the head coach at Salem High School. He's the head football coach. Is that the one thing you're coaching over there? Well, I, t I picked up uh, junior high basketball last year at, really? at Franklin Park. Yeah, I coached. Uh, I was an assistant uh, sophomore coach at Piatone for 12 years. I was there uh -huh. at the high school level. Basketball? And, uh, yeah, yeah. So I did football, head football, and then JV basketball. And um, the opening came up at Franklin Park uh, a year and a half ago to, to – 
to help that program out. And my seventh grader is he he likes football a lot. Uh, he loves basketball. Oh, and really? He's all in on so basketball. He plays so he's he'll be a seventh grader this year. So I said I would come in and do it for a few years and and help them out and, good and help. help them get in line with what Coach Fernbacher wants at the high school and yeah. that kind of thing. So yeah, yeah so I Co- do that too. Coach Fernbacher's doing a nice job there. He too, is. He's he's do, he does a really good job. And and it's weird because I told our the former head coach that I worked with at Piatone, I, I texted back and forth with him several times, and I just said how many similar philosophies that he had to what Coach Fernbacher wants to see done as far as uh, you know hard nose man to man defense right. uh, those types of things, and and a lot of the philosophies are just mirroring images of each other and. It's interesting because Coach Fernbacher's had a lot of success in his career, mm-hmm. and and we had a lot of success in, in basketball at Piatone too. Yeah. So I think there's some some things there that that go together for sure. You were talking about the uh, uh, the your weight program mm-hmm. and your training program. Tell me a little bit about the summer training program. Sure. Uh, you've uh, you kind of mix all the sports together, don't you? We try to, um, and this was the first year that we did it. When I went to Salem seven years ago, it was kind of the vision overall that I had wanted to see where we would get. Uh, you know, we have all our kids working under the same program during the school year right. in weight training class. But, right. we, you know, during the summertime, everybody kind of fragments and, and goes their own way. And I wanted to see an umbrella where we keep all those kids together working for those two and a half months during the summer as well. So um, our administration was completely behind it. Uh, our women's coaches were were really behind it. And um, so we had we would do our, our, our football boys in the morning and then we would have the girls come in later in the morning and do a workout with them as well this summer. So um, it, it was really it was was really good we we go monday wednesday and, and friday okay. um we do a lot of uh speed training and agility on the track uh, oh, really? first and then we do uh, about 30 to 45 minutes of weight training in the weight room okay. kids are in there about an hour and a half total and um I think it really it was really a beneficial program. It's not something that takes an incredible amount of time because we have so many kids that play other sports. They have to yeah. work. Um, but it also gives them a chance to really uh, work on things that are outside of the skill level of their, their teams. Really? That let their coaches worry about that stuff. We told the coaches, we'll worry about getting them stronger and faster and um my defensive coordinator at the at the football program at the high school is his name is alex cable he's a newton guy and he teaches pe and and uh coaches the track team at franklin park in our junior high and he has been instrumental in helping get that going he's he's kind of completely taken over our speed training development really? of all of our sports and um, some of the ideas he's brought to our program in the last couple of years are just uh, awesome and it's really been beneficial for all of our student athletes and, and i'm really excited to see where it continues to go i've got a picture a couple of pictures here uh, you can tell me this so this is the typical days group that you were at right that, total numbers yes um that would have been a week ago Friday. We had all the groups together at one time. We brought them all in together, and we kind of divided them up into four teams, and we did kind of a, a strongman competition. We oh, okay. did a 40-yard dash competition, a tug-of-war, dodgeball tournament, and then a bench competition. Yeah. And then uh, our local Shriners Club came in and, and cooked out for them oh, after really this at cool. noon. So, um, yeah, it was kind of a nice way to end the summer and, and uh, you know get the two groups together because they don't work out together typically during the summertime. Um, but it was kind of nice to see them all cheering for each other and, and uh, getting the boys to work in with the girls and all that kind of you stuff. You wouldn't do it. Uh, it wasn't. It wasn't by uh, a year, was it? Freshman, sophomore. No, year, no. Seniors. We we kind of put a couple seniors in charge of each team, and then we kind of divided the teams up okay. so that they were as equal as so possible. Uh, who won? Uh, well, I think it was the white team that won, and okay. I can't. I couldn't. I couldn't. I couldn't you, remember you, off the top of my head. Um, that was that was everybody together. But we did. I think I did have a picture of just the white team that, that won as well. So let's uh, but, let's, uh, uh, let's take a look at this yeah. picture. I got to tell you, coach. I have been, I have worked out. I've been uh, I've you know I was a football player myself, sure, a sure. wrestler myself. Uh, I and but the last time that we had nap time was when I was in kindergarten. I know, I know. It's, that looks uh, like nap time. It does. It's part of our it's part of our routine. One Is of the it things nap that, time? No. Well. It's, <laughs> It looks like it. It, it looks like, look it. like it. Yeah, to the lay person, it looks like it. But what we call that is uh, that's that's what we call belly breathing time, and we, that's how we start every workout. It gets the kids. Uh, it it kind of regulates their breathing and gets really? their, it helps them get their minds right. And um, again, that was that was it's part a focus of the thing. It is is part of the th- one of the things that Coach Cable has brought to us, uh, and. Um, I tell you, some of the things that we're doing are, are a little bit voodoo-y it, it, to say it, but uh, it's pretty interesting stuff, you know. And that's just one of them. Uh, it's it's pretty fascinating. Well, I love it. I mean, you, you've got all kind. You've, you 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 appear to have. Uh, There's over 100 kids out well, there, so that's got, what we want. You certainly have full buy-in to the kids wanting right. to play on the track. Yeah, I think because they've seen results. Yeah, well, yeah I'm just teasing. Yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> nothing wrong with taking a break before you start. There is nothing wrong with that. It's it's like stretching for right. a while. It's stretching and getting focusing. What are the so have you? 
have you been able to notice uh, gains in speed from your kids or from some absolutely. of the other kids? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, with some of the things that we're doing as far as uh, our warm up goes, you know, you mentioned stretching. Uh, you know, we, we quit stretching a year and a half ago. We haven't stretched in 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 probably eighteen or nineteen months. Uh, really? You know, we, we don't run wind sprints after football practice anymore. Uh, we quit doing that last year. We don't even run the kids if they're so the conditioning. Your conditioning setup is entirely different. From it's it's completely different. Um, some of the how things. How do you condition that, then? It's all about uh, how we structure our practices. Um, we'll have always moving, always moving, and and every rep that the kids get in practice is is at a hundred percent max speed, full effort. Um, we talk a lot about full recovery, yeah. Um, because if you're doing a repetition that is at seventy five percent, you're not training your body to play yeah. at a, at a at level that's going to be exactly, which is where we want to be. Yeah. And um, you know, we really felt like last year. You know, we had, uh, I think we had six total concussions, uh, one of which happened in the cafeteria. Um, you know, that's one of the things, you know, some of the things that we're doing in our warm up uh, helps with neck structure and uh, muscle alignment to help support the head better. Um, you know, we had, I think we had four soft tissue injuries last year. Oh, really? Um, as far as, you know, pulled muscles, hip flexors, ankle yeah. sprains, those types of things. Uh, and, you know, again, it's, uh, it's one year that we've been into it. We could go the exact opposite direction this year, but right now we're we're we believe what we're doing is is really important to not wear the kids' bodies down, but keep them as fresh as possible. How did it? Uh, how did your cramps work? We we don't have anybody cramp. We see now that's the thing. That's what kind of tells you mm-hmm. if everybody's going going full out right. and they're not cramping at all. Mm-hmm. That that's that's a good indicator. It is. I think it is, and and I think you know, uh, I will say this too though. I think our kids nowadays are much more in tune with what they're putting in their bodies really and and nutrition has become much more of an important factor in what they're doing not only to prepare for competition but to help them recover from competition uh, and get ready for that next bout of exercise whenever that might be um you know, when, when I was in school, when we were in school, uh, you, nobody really talked to us about nutrition. Not and, at all. And how to uh, eat. Other than, other than wrestling, losing weight. Right, exactly. They didn't even tell exactly. you how to do that. Right. You'd run with the uh, with the, the, the big the body suits, the sweat on. suits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. just sweat as much as oh, you could. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, nowadays. Not, so you're telling me that's not healthy. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Oh, I can no. tell you, I saw enough people pass right. out. No, right. that's not healthy. No, it's not. And, and, but, you know, and not to fault the guys who were doing that back then. I, I used to be better. a coach that would, would run the kids into the ground and run 30 wind sprints at the end of a football practice. I did that, too, at the beginning of my career. I bet your Piatone players from 2002, yeah. but they may look at this and say, well, who is who this is guy? Who is this guy? Right, exactly. <laughs> Sometimes I think the same thing. I do. But uh, you know what? The proof is in the pudding. The kids the kids respond to it, and, and it's been a real positive thing for us wow i I have never heard i have never heard you're the first you're the first high school football coach i have ever met who says they don't run wind sprints yeah we we didn't run we didn't run a wind sprint last year not even in, in disciplinary situations so what do you do in disciplinary laps we will most of the time honestly it, it comes into play with game time is that right? uh, yeah we we try not the to bench do is your best the bench it is, is your best it really is because the best. kids put the you know the kids have to put so much time in in the off season if you're going to take playing time away from them uh that's a huge detriment yeah um anybody can go out and run two miles as slow as they want yeah um but you're training the muscles to go slow yeah and we don't want to do that it doesn't matter what the situation Golly, is that is i gotta tell you it's antithetical i mean it, right. it, it just doesn't for a uh for a guy who played football, played I wrestled in high school and college. It, sure, it just makes at no the sense. collegiate level. I mean, yeah. those, that's that's a different level, and those guys are at a different level as far as the things that they do. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, we a lot of the things that we're doing have we've gotten from you know people in the suburbs. Uh, the University of Oregon football and track well, teams are doing know, it. Oregon, those, those people are Oregon plays a hundred plays a game. They're they're at a different level. Yeah, and and you know if they're doing that kind of stuff. They're, there's they're something going, to it. They're going every twenty seconds. Right. As there's to something every, to it, as opposed to every thirty or forty, Absolutely. like everybody else. Right. So they, uh, I tell you what, that's fast. That's just great. I'm talking here with uh, Kevin Green. He's a Salem High School football coach. We're going to talk more about nuts and bolts and the team when we return. You are watching Big Talk with Bruce Dickey right here on Wabash Catch TV, and uh, Kevin and I will be back right after these words.
At Wabash Communications, our goal is simple, to keep people connected. And today we are doing just that, better than ever, by delivering the latest technology and personal service only a local provider can offer. We offer services anywhere from fast, reliable internet, TV services, and home monitoring solutions to crystal clear local and long distance phone service. Wabash continues the commitment we started back in 1952, delivering a great connection to the most important people we know, our customers. So choose Wabash, the local service from people you can trust. Welcome to Clay County Hospital. Clay County Hospital and Clinics offer the best in services and care in the area with a staff that strives to provide the very best in patient-centered care. We offer full hospital services including radiology, therapy, surgery, labs, and emergency services. Our clinics located in Flora, Louisville, and Clay City allow us to reach out to Clay County residents so that you never have to go far from home for your health care needs. In addition to our regular provider staff, we also offer affiliated specialty provider services at our Flora Clinic. Finally, have a minor injury or illness but don't want to wait for an appointment? Our walk-in, no appointment clinic hours in Flora are Monday through Thursday, 11 a.m. until 8 p.m. and Saturday from 8 a.m. until noon. Make Clay County Hospital your number one choice for health care, convenient and close to home. Clay County Hospital, your number one choice in health care. Hi, my name is Bruce Dickey of Wabash Catch TV's Big Talk with Bruce Dickey. Watch us each weekday right here on your local cable station. We're on at 9 a.m. with a repeat at 9 p.m. It's your local TV talk show with plenty of information, fun, and frivolity to get your start day started right or maybe even ended right. Please contact me at 665-9970 or at D at wabash.net if you are a a member of your organization would like to be a guest on the show at 665-9970. Big Talk with Bruce Dickey. Hey, thanks for watching. Come see us at Anthony's Wild West in downtown Florida. Enjoy salad, pizza, and pasta buffet 11 to 2, Monday through Saturday. Not hungry for pizza? Our menu features a variety of food for every taste. Our dining room is large and spacious for two or a crowd. Let us help you host a private party in one of our banquet rooms. Visit the fallout shelter to have a drink with good friends. Then try your luck at one of our five gaming machines. See you soon in the Wild West. Your call is very important to us. Please hold. Your call will be answered in the order it was received. Tired of paying a big faceless company for your local telephone service in Flora? Now you can easily switch your 662 telephone number to Wabash Communications in Flora. That's right, Wabash can now provide local phone service to the Flora area, and yes, you can keep your 662 telephone number. It's available to both business and residential customers. Call us today at 662-3636. Wabash, your local telecommunications provider. When you want an honest deal in hometown service without the runaround, go to LeMond, Chevrolet, Chrysler, and Fairfield. Let Gabe McGahey, Sheldon Bunning, Jeff Black, Dennis Downs, Matthew Rogers, or Caleb Dunn score the best deal for you on your next new or pre-owned vehicle. Parts and service departments with factory trained technicians and express lane and state-of-the-art tire and alignment technology. LeMond's always inspects your battery, antifreeze, wipers, and tires for free. We want you prepared for the open road ahead. Open 24-7 at LeMondsOnline.com. You'll like the way we do business. Welcome back. Big Talk with Bruce Dickey. I'm Bruce Dickey. Thank you so much for tuning in this morning. My guest is Kevin Green. He's a Salem High School football coach, and uh, he's been there for eight years. Last year, kind of a struggle. Finished 2-7. and seven. Uh, uh, did you, you? But you've got a lot of folks coming back from that team. It was, it, it was a little bit inexperienced last year weren't you we were at some spots um you know defensively i felt like we were we were pretty inexperienced at a lot of spots we do return nine kids uh this coming season that played quite a bit or started several games for us and that's uh, always a good place to start um, you mentioned one all-conference linebacker we coming did. back here's a yep. boy who's mm -hmm. the other one uh eric brubaker he'll be a senior um and he's uh, he's definitely a young man that uh has worked really hard he's a captain for us uh, one of our best weight room guys which is typically how it goes yeah. um well, and, that's, um, who, that's who gets to be the captain. They're the right, leaders. The, the guys who are just there working yeah. every day. And, and Eric does a lot of work outside of our program uh, with his with his dad. They go up and do extra workouts and things like that, which is just awesome. And uh, 
we'll rely on him on both sides of the ball quite a bit. And, and uh, you know, he's a kid that's uh, academically does a really good job, and he'll he'll have a chance to play college football at some oh, is that point. Right? Yeah, I think he will. I, you know, I don't know how 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 high up he will go, but um, there will be opportunities for him to play if if he wants to. How about on the offensive side of the ball? What are we looking at? Offensively, we were, you know we lose uh, Nate Roth, who was our quarterback. He was a three year starter and a, a, our record setter at, as far as career passing yardage goes. So we'll have to replace him, and then two pretty good wide receivers and Nick Rexilius and Caden Ware. Uh, all three of those guys were three year starters for yeah. us. Um, so. Pretty good production there, and our, our running back uh, Artie Salimi has also graduated. So, um, you know, we in a skill player's game, which is what football has become, yeah. uh, we have to replace several key ones. And uh, you know, we will rely on those nine returning starters on defense to to carry us a little bit early in the season. Do you prefer to run? It, I mean, you've been running kind of a emphasis on throwing mm -hmm. over the past few years I, it's something you kind of have to de it depends on who you have coming in isn't it it is Wh how, whether you're a running offense or a throwing offense yeah it is i think you know you, you do your best to to tailor what you do to what the kids do well um and at the same time you've got to try to mesh that with what you teach well yeah. as well and i think a lot of people you know sometimes you lose sight of that if you're someone on the outside standing on the fence line or in the bleachers you say well we need to be doing this instead and you know you've got to try to do your best to mesh what the kids do well as far as their talents but also what you can teach and what you know how to teach as far as the fundamentals of those schemes and getting them to mesh together so uh, that can be challenging at times you know and, and that's probably honestly one of the most challenging parts of the job when it comes to the x's and o's you know i'm sitting here thinking that it's kind of back into the last segment where we were talking about the the uh the different philosophies of conditioning and that kind of thing that really molds well with the IHSA's new uh, practice directives, doesn't it? It does. I think it does. Um, you know, it's it's um, it's such a slippery slope right now yeah. because you know we're trying to make the game safer and, and take care of kids, yeah. which is the number one priority as Absolutely. it should be. Um, but at the same time, you know, football is such a multi-moving part game, and and there are so many different fundamentals that have to be taught for all of the different positions and. Sometimes when you see those practice times get reduced, it does make you cringe as a coach just a little bit, not because you want to be that guy who drives them into the ground, but at the same time, you also have a lot of things to teach yeah. fundamentally on top of the X's and O's that go into it. And, you well, know, you again, mean, it's, you gotta, it's, you gotta, it's, a, it's a tough mesh. you got to teach proper blocking positions Absolutely. For, for a kid not to get hurt trying Absolutely. to block. you got to teach proper tackling for mm -hmm. a kid not to not to get hurt himself tackling right. somebody. Right. And, it, you know, again, you, you watch the, the – preseason games uh, from the NFL. They've got this new uh, he helmet, helmet contact rule. Um, I, I can't even imagine being an NFL referee right now oh. and, and how you're going to try to officiate that rule the right way consistently. Since you brought it up, mm -hmm. tell me what your thought is. Uh, uh, see, I, you know, the NFL is such a uh, doggone it, we're going to do it our way, right, or we're not going to sure. do it. College has had the, 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 the helmet rule pretty much right the last couple of three years I thought the the targeting rule mm -hmm. uh, and where basically you get tossed if you do it and and it now granted you're seeing some players leave games early but they're looking at video whereas the NFL referees don't get the opportunity to look at video for those right it's uh, you know and, and I think sometimes the college rule gets a bad rap because there's situations in, in big games that are on TV where you'll see that one guy who's well, pretty... The bowl, I think the Rose Bowl kid got it, knocked out it, in the first quarter. It, exactly. and that's But he did it. He did it. He did it. Right. And, and I agree. And I think, you know, it's, it's, it's one of those situations where it doesn't happen as often as you think it does. Yeah. But when it does... In some cases, it's in those high-profile situations yeah. where a lot is made of it. Yeah. And but by and large, I mean, when you sit there and consistently watch college games every Saturday, which yeah. you know we try to which do, which I do, right? You we try do. to do. You see that rule enforced really not nearly as often as what people think it is. But mm -hmm. like you said, in a first quarter of a Rose Bowl game where everybody's sitting down in yeah. New Year's Day to watch the yeah. football games and yeah. they see that one specific moment. Now all of a sudden it's it's a different situation right. when really it isn't something that is a is a large scale problem. I don't think. I agree, and I think you. that rule has helped clean that type of play up a I lot. Mean, I, I watch I'll watch every football game the Illinois plays. I'll watch sure. each game and over the course of the season, and you'll end up getting maybe two to three guys tossed on targeting right. over sure. the course of a season. Right for one for a team. So if that, if that's typical, and I think it's probably pretty close to typical. I would agree. That means. Over the course of a weekend, fifty games on a weekend, you're looking at maybe ten kids getting getting tossed, and hopefully, 
it's getting better though as right. they as as kids understand how the rule works more right and i think thing. yeah and I, I think statistically if you looked at it i think that would probably be the case and i yeah. think when you look at it as well you say 10 kids in one weekend how many kids are playing in games oh gosh i mean the percentages are are you're you're at less than one percent yeah uh, you know talking, i mean if you're talking 50 games you'd be oh. uh, you're looking at uh, uh, 60 kids a game right total for exactly each, well, maybe more than that be 80 kids a game mm-hmm. for each, so so yeah you're looking at four thousand kids and, and at the end of the day it's a game that as, as for myself and so many people well, in our country, play. we, we played it. We love it. Uh, we think there are so many benefits to it outside of what happens on the field. Yeah. Uh, anything that's going to make our game last longer and yeah. have better longevity and, and make it safer, yeah. um, how could you not be all for that? Oh, that's that's fascinating. Uh, since we're talking officiating, have you mm-hmm. talked to any of the high school officials this year? What's the what's the NFHS? Uh, what are they uh, emphasizing this year? What are the points? I think the know? biggest the biggest ones that we've seen, not just this year, but in the last couple of years, is is defenseless player. Uh, you know, situations where uh, defenders will take out or try to hit a receiver who's making a play and is in a defenseless position. Um, but really, you know, it's anytime there's a rule enacted for high school football, I feel for high school football officials. Yeah. It's not their full-time job. No. And, you know, and anything. More. And we, we, need, we do. We, we need more officials. There's, there's not enough of them right now. But, you know, the – the National Federation has tried to do some of the things that the Collegian and NFL has done, which as far as make the game safer. Yeah. We're all for that. Um, it's hard, though, for high school officials to make some of those calls, again, because they're they not... They don't have review. They, they don't, and they're not privy to some of the training uh, outlets and, and uh, yeah. opportunities that these other officials are, and that makes it really hard for them, and I feel for them. I really do. And, and by and large, the crews that we get week in and week out are, are there for the kids. Yeah. They want to keep the kids they safe. They wouldn't be there otherwise. Exactly. And, and they do a great job, and um, you know, we appreciate appreciate them but again it's 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 very difficult it's it's a difficult game to officiate it's a tough job talking here to uh, kevin green salem high school football coach and we'll be back with more probably going to talk a little bit about the uh, outlook for the cahokia conference this year as well as uh, we might end up talking a little you want to talk a little college or pro football we can talk whatever, whatever you want See, we've been talking a lot of football that's always depressing <laughs> these days it is these days it is <laughs> you're watching uh, big talk with bruce dickey on wabash catch tv and we'll be back right after these when you want an honest deal in hometown service without the runaround go to lamont chevrolet chrysler in fairfield let gabe mcgahey sheldon bunning jeff black dennis downs matthew rogers or caleb dunn score the best deal for you on your next new or pre-owned vehicle parts and service departments with factory trained technicians and express lane and state-of-the-art tire and alignment technology lamont's always inspects your battery antifreeze wipers and tires for free We want you prepared for the open road ahead. Open 24-7 at LeMondsOnline.com. You'll like the way we do business. Get what you want and nothing else when you order a la carte internet from Wabash Communications. Wabash Communications is now able to offer a la carte internet called broadband only with fast download and upload speeds, reliable service, and unlimited data usage. No phone service is required for our broadband only plans. Our broadband only menu includes packages up to one gig download. Call us at 665-3311 now to order. Service availability and internet speed will depend on location. Contact us for details. Welcome to Clay County Hospital. Clay County Hospital and Clinics offer the best in services and care in the area with a staff that strives to provide the very best in patient-centered care. We offer full hospital services including radiology, therapy, surgery, labs, and emergency services. Our clinics located in Flora, Louisville, and Clay City allow us to reach out to Clay County residents so that you never have to go far from home for your health care needs. In addition to our regular provider staff, we also offer affiliated specialty provider services at our Flora Clinic. Finally, have a minor injury or illness, but don't want to wait for an appointment? Our walk-in, no appointment clinic hours in Flora are Monday through Thursday, 11 a.m. until 8 p.m. and Saturday from 8 a.m. until noon. Make Clay County Hospital your number one choice for healthcare, convenient and close to home. Clay County Hospital, your number one choice in healthcare. 
At Wabash Communications, our goal is simple, to keep people connected. And today we are doing just that, better than ever, by delivering the latest technology and personal service only a local provider can offer. We offer services anywhere from fast, reliable internet, TV services, and home monitoring solutions to crystal clear local and long distance phone service. Wabash continues the commitment we started back in 1952, delivering a great connection to the most important people we know, our customers. So choose Wabash, the local service from people you can trust. Hi, my name is Bruce Dickey of Wabash Catch TV's Big Talk with Bruce Dickey. Watch us each weekday right here on your local cable station. We're on at 9 a.m. with a repeat at 9 p.m. It's your local TV talk show with plenty of information, fun, and frivolity to get your start day started right or maybe even ended right. Please contact me at 665-9970 or at D at wabash.net if you are a member of your organization would like to be a guest on the show at 665-9970 big talk with bruce dickey hey thanks for watching come see us at anthony's wild west in downtown flora enjoy salad pizza and pasta buffet 11 to 2 monday through saturday not hungry for pizza our menu features a variety of food for every taste our dining room is large and spacious for two or a crowd let us help you host a private party in one of our banquet rooms. Visit the fallout shelter to have a drink with good friends. Then try your luck at one of our five gaming machines. See you soon in the Wild West. Welcome back, Big Talk with Bruce Dickey. My guest today, we've been talking to Kevin Green. He's a Salem High School football coach and uh, Salem in the Cahokia Conference. Last year, they got you won one game in the Cahokia last year, finished two and seven. Um, what's the outlook for the conference this year? You know, I think it's... Uh you know, I think it's a lot the same as it Trent is every Westland year. Trenton Westland, yeah, Westland won it last year. They've got uh, four of their five offensive linemen back. Um, they're all about 265 or better. That's big. That's big. Hey, that's a big kid. That's a big kid, and, they're, and they all look good. Are they good. fast? They move. They, can, oh. they get off the ball well, and they've got a fullback that's back a shame. Uh, who was very good. So they And they've got a new coach this year. Coach Calling takes over. Uh, he was at Centralia for several years and, and really got things going there. Um, so he's going to do a great job there. And, and Columbia is um, going to be strong. Columbia is going to be good again. Um, you we've, know, got, we've got Columbia at Salem third yep, week of the third season. Third week of the season. And um, Bree Central, we play them uh, the week before you guys come yeah. over in week two. Uh, Coach Short does a great job there. His kids are always going to be competitive. And um, so, you know, we're, we're, we're at a point right now where in our program, we'd been in the Apollo for a number of years. We'd struggled there greatly. And um, we're just trying to get some consistency and, and in, we're the hope, in the Cahokia. And yeah. we're hoping to get off to a good start. Um, but the move to the Cahokia, I feel like, has been a good move for our program and for our school as a whole. You know, it's there's some closer conference games, yeah. uh, which we're really not helps. driving up to Mount Zion, which is right. 200 miles That's, away. Yeah, it's two hours. It's over yeah. two hours, you know. And, um, you know, we had great attendance – at our away conference games last year, and we had great student attendance, which I think, yeah. See, that's the key. It is. I think that's a big part of it. You know, my wife and I would go to a, a we had a huge uh, conference basketball game last year in February at Westland, and we had a huge number of students there. They, you know, that, that kind of stuff would have never happened in the Apollo. And um, we had great student attendance at some of our road football games and volleyball games, and, you know, it's just, uh, it's been a real positive move for us. It's, it's very much in its infancy right now, but I think it's going to be a good move for our school as a whole and in our football program, you I hope. Yeah, five home games. Games this mm -hmm. year, and a couple of them from out of conference, uh, with Westmont coming in for mm -hmm. homecoming. What do we know about Westmont? They were three and six last year in the Interstate Eight Conference, which is a, a league you're, that's up. Uh, you're familiar yep, with. Piatone played them in the Interstate Eight for several years. Um, they are a suburban school, um, somewhat landlocked around the Downers Grove areas of the western suburbs. So their enrollment's not real high, um, but they will be. They'll be physical, and they'll, they'll have some good athletes, and, and uh, that'll be a tough game. Uh, we're glad to have it at home. Yeah. Yeah. That's for sure. A yeah. long bus ride for those kids. But, um, yeah, we have them in the middle of the season, and then we finish up the year with Massac County, okay. uh, who, you know, really – Has struggled. They have. And I think, you know, when you look at that program, uh, they're going to have a new coach this year as well. And, um, you know, our program is not a lot different. You know, we got two teams at the end of the season who are both going to be probably looking to try and get some positive things going in their program. So, um, you know, hopefully it's a, it's a good uh, – 
a good uh, relationship week nine for both teams. Uh, Coach, the thing, you know, you're always looking for improvement from year to year to year because you want to get back in the playoffs. It's been a while, right. hasn't it, Coach? It has. We, you know, our program hasn't made the playoffs since 06, and uh, that's the only year we made the playoffs that we were in the Apollo Conference, uh, which was just not a – it just didn't seem like it was ever a good fit for our team and our kids. Um, but, yeah, I mean, so much of high school football is about the playoffs. Yeah. You know, it really is. And, and – uh, unfortunately, we can talk about all the good things that our kids do off the field and that type of thing. But at the end of the day, uh, that's what people want to know. They, and they want to make the playoffs. Right. Are, right. You in, are you in the, the final 32 or not? And um, so that that's our goal. You know, that's our goal every year. And, and we're no different than any of the other programs that are sitting here just getting started with practice. And yeah. everybody's got those ambitions right now. That's exactly right. Let's talk about college football. Are you a Illini fan, right? Diehard Illini fans. Yep. Are they going to – okay uh, – are it's they going to be able it's to turn hard. the core? It's hard. <laughs> it's it's hard. Like, I mean, you got to like Lovey, right? I love we're well in our household. We're big Lovey fans. He was, you know, he was the coach of the Bears, and when my family lived up north, we had season tickets to Bears games. Okay. So, and my dad and I uh, were able to go to the Super Bowl when they went to the Super Bowl back in 07. No and uh, that was a, it was an unbelievable trip. So, so a uh, Des or what's his name uh, gets the uh, opening kickoff and runs it back. You must right. have been high as a. Guy. I tell I tell people all the time, and and I I shouldn't say this, but my wife's heard me say it in front of her. I, I've had a lot of great moments in my life married three children yeah not not that doesn't compare much to watching Devin Hester run 92 yards <laughs> with, with my dad at my side to open Super Bowl 41 and the outcome of that game wasn't what we wanted but uh it was an unbelievable experience oh, Devin Hester so, pro. is he yeah. gonna make the Hall of Fame you think God, it's gosh Hall of I Fame hope so weekend right yeah now, in know. fact we're my my uh two oldest sons and I are heading over to meet my dad in Canton tomorrow for the are uh, you really or for on Saturday for the Hall of Fame but uh we uh we are huge, huge Bears fans. Well, so, and we love Lovey, and I yeah. think he's going to be able to. I think it's no different than any other realm of football right now. They've got to figure out the quarterback position. Yeah, and you know, regardless of who it is, um, they've got to find a guy that can come in there and be consistently the guy over a period of two to three years. They just have not had that lately, and until they do, they can do whatever they want on defense. But in the college level especially, that's where it starts. Isn't it intriguing how the college offenses are now dictating what the NFL does? It as is. Opposed to, as, as well as high school. And they've mm -hmm. always kind of done that. Right. But, but right now, college is pushing what they're doing in the NFL, isn't it? And, and it's never been that way. It never has. For the longest time. Uh, the NFL guys were always kind of uh, sat were, on top they, of this yeah, mountaintop. And it was to the, it, it, very much so. Yeah. And I remember, it's funny you bring that up, because I remember back in the early 2000s, Dick Geron was the head coach of the Bears, and he brought in an offensive coordinator by the name of Gary Croton, who had come from BYU. Mm -hmm. And Croton was spreading people out. Yeah throwing these quick wide receiver screens and for a while it had some success now the bears didn't have the right personnel to run that offense and everybody shunned him and everybody thought that what he was doing with running the quarterback oh, a little you bit can't you that. can't do that in the NFL. Run, run, run. exactly that's yeah. that was their attitude and it's funny how you know 10 to 15 years later like you said now those things that are being done widespread in college yeah. those have filtered up right usually things filter down in our game um I mean, but the now they're filtering pass, up the drop back passer in the pro game is going away right there are very few tom brady's and aaron Rodgers anymore right. who are going to sit in the pocket and pick you apart partly because of talent uh there's not a lot of guys who are coming up with that kind of talent but also uh there's a lot of guys coming up who can run and throw and our double threat guys yeah. and, and the NFL is is you play, you taking advantage of those. Yeah, it was exactly. All right, uh, tell me, do you think the Bears have a chance to uh, in the North in the NFC North? That's a you mentioned quarterbacks. There are a lot of really good quarterbacks in that NFL there is. North. I think NFC North. I yeah, I think when you look at the Bears, uh, we're excited about the head coach. I think Matt Nagy is going to do a great job. Um, and, you know, again, I think it starts defensively. I think defensively, if they can stay healthy, they're going to be competitive. Do they have enough you know, playmakers on offense? I don't know. That's how it always starts in Chicago. It does. two months of the year, the weather's just terrible. It is. And you it is. Uh, it, you just never know. Yeah. Right. So I, I think they've got a chance to be more competitive than they were last year. And, you, you know, like playoffs, Bish? I don't know. Do you like Biscuit? I think it's too early to say. I think he's a great kid. I think he says all the right things. He's obviously working very hard. Yeah. His skill set is good. Um but there's just not enough, you know, proof in the pudding yet to say whether he's going to be the guy. Not a ton of time. Who's the best? You've been doing this for 20 years um, for high school coaching. Sure. And, and, and you've watched college football. Who's the best player you have seen in high school in person? Can you, yeah. can you narrow that down? As a or? coach? Yeah, as a coach. Yeah, P.J. Fleck. 
Really? Head coach at Minnesota. Yeah, my second year, uh, my, fir- my first two years out of college, uh, I was the offensive coordinator at Hersher, and we were in the same league as Caneland yeah. High School, and that's where he went. And um, he was 5'10", 175 pounds, and, and pound for pound, uh, I tell anybody that'll listen, he was by far and away the best football player high school-wise that I've ever coached against. What did he play? Uh, he was a wide receiver and a defensive back. No kidding. And he was just uh, the passion that he brought to the game, the relentless. Well, he brings to coaching. It's the same attitude that he had when he was on the field. And it was, uh, I, I like to tell people that I, I watched him, I coached you against him. You knew him, him when? I, I, it this would have been uh, 97, 98 were those two school years. Did you guys win? No. They beat us. <laughs> The first year they beat us bad. Second year was a more competitive game. We were better that year, but uh, they won state championships that year for a reason, and he was a big part of that. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. I, I, I got to tell you, I was I was figuring uh, up in that conference, I was thinking, okay, you're looking at alignment. I'm sure. assuming a, a big lineman that yeah. went on to Notre Dame sure. or Michigan or something right. like no, that. Where yeah. did Fleck play college ball? He went to Northern. Oh, and did uh, had a couple short stints on practice squads, I think with the Bucks and the Niners before he got into the college coaching ranks. I think he was a GA at Ohio State and then kind of just kept working his way up. So, Well, you know, that's the thing. The uh, A guy like P.J. Fleck uh, and, for instance, the guy who's taking over at Ohio State, yeah. the the proof just kind of rolls along with him because, I mean, those, those guys are both – Passion guys, yep. weren't they? A lot of energy, yeah, you know, and that's what they coach, and that's what you got to have nowadays. Hey, Ke- it's Kevin, it's great to meet you. Hey, I, thanks for having I, me. I, I really appreciate, it. appreciate you coming in anytime. That, that is Kevin Green. He's the head coach at Salem High School, Salem uh, football head coach, as well as uh, you know. We didn't even talk about seventh grade basketball. That's okay. We'll you get to it next time, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> You're watching Big Talk with Bruce Dickey. Have a great day. Talk to y'all real, real soon.